write the linear equation in slope-intercept form. And slope-intercept may be something that you've been introduced to already, or it might be a new expression to you. When we talk about slope-intercept form, what that means is that I'm going to have an equation that typically is going to have x's and y's in it as my two variables. And what our goal is, is to solve for y. We want to get y isolated. We want to get the y by itself. So solve for y. We want y on one side of the equation all by itself. And then on the other side of the equation, notice that what we have is we're going to have an x term. And then this b just stands for some constant. And so on the other side, we want the x term first, and then we're going to add or subtract the constant, constant. So that's what we're doing. We're basically, when we see these directions to write a linear equation in slope-intercept form, when you see that, think, solve for y, get y by itself. So since we're going to get y by itself, I want to highlight that y to remind myself this is what I want to get by itself, that's what I want to get alone. We need to kick everything else over to the other side of the equation. So let's see how we're going to do that. Remember that we want to be thinking about the order of operations and working order of operations from the weakest to the strongest when we solve. This is for solving. When we're trying to peel things away from this y. So let's see how we're going to do this. The weakest operation in my order of operations is adding or subtracting. And here I can see, oh yeah, I've got a subtraction sign here. So whatever's on the other side of that subtraction sign is what I want to get rid of first. So I see this 4x. This whole 4x is separated by adding or subtracting from the y. So that's what we're going to move first. Because this is a positive 4x, we need to subtract 4x in order for that to cancel out. And if I subtract 4x on the left side, I certainly need to do the same thing on the right side as well. So 4x minus 4x, those will cancel out. And what I'm going to be left with on the left side is negative 2y. Be sure that that negative sign comes down. It's real easy to lose the negative at that step. So be sure that you keep track of that. Now on the right side, we have 14 minus 4x. But remember that we said that we want the x term to come first. And so instead of writing 14 minus 4x, I'm going to write negative 4x plus 14. Okay. I still have these two terms. That 14 was a positive 14. That's a negative 4x. Because they're not like terms, I can rearrange them however I want to, just so long as I'm sure that I keep track of my signs, because that's a negative 4x. I want to be sure that that negative is there as well. OK, so we're getting closer to getting the y by itself, but it's not quite alone yet. So let's just mark that y. We're trying to get the y alone. But right now, it's got that negative 2 holding on to it. We want to ask ourselves, well, how is that negative 2 holding on? Notice this is negative 2 times y. That's here at this multiplier divide level in my order of operations. So since the negative 2 is being multiplied to the y, in order to clear it out, we're going to need to divide. Because with multiplying and dividing, those are opposite operations, and they're going to cancel out. On the right side, we have to be careful here. That negative 2 is going to end up dividing both of these terms. It's going to divide both the negative 4x and the positive 14. So we want to be sure that we write that negative 2 as dividing both of those pieces. So the negative 2s are going to cancel out. Finally, I have my y by itself. y equals, and now we just do our division here. 
with this negative 4 over negative 2, be careful of your signs. We know a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So positive 4 divided by 2 is 2x. That x is just coming along for the ride. And then positive 14 divided by negative 2 is going to give me negative 7. And so here's my linear equation in slope-intercept form. We have the y equals m x plus b. And here we could see that m, my value for m would be 2. And this plus minus, don't let that fool you. Remember we could put a plus sign here if we wanted to. This is just telling us that my value for b is going to be negative 7. And so that gives me some good information. This will help when we go back and, and are doing some graphing. Knowing what those values are will help us to create graphs quickly and effectively.